point up yet. I'm on video, help! Got it? Yep. So how's that look, Mike? That is absolutely great. Spot on. Spot on. Really great. Very good. Level? Well, I think I'd better come up and have a look up from up there. See what it looks like looking down. Looking better. Absolutely well, what's this pipe marvelous. down here then, Mike? Well, this is the um, this is the overflow. When you want the wheels to stop, the water has to still keep going. So you open up a flap, and the water comes in down the pipe. Yes. And out at the bottom. Through that the pipe pond. there. Yes. And let's just see what this is. Uh, like I'm now doing a bit of a tightrope walk along the top just so that we can get a glimpse 30 foot up or however high up it is of the work that we've just been completing this afternoon we've been securing these telegraph poles which we can now see uh, now fixed in place as they are with the bolts ready to go on uh, which will support the water chute, which feeds water into the wheel there. Uh, well, I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I've got a head for heights, but Mike, and I'm feeling a bit uh, topsy turvy. Oh, you're uh, making me think feel you take the camera. If you want, I'll show you the. In fact, now I'm back on safe ground or land again. I can uh, see this rather fine bit of concrete uh, ducting that you've. Uh, cast over there. So in fact now I'm walking upstream along the chute so in fact if I turn round we can see the chute as it disappears down there. And this is going upstream, cast concrete and this is where the water will come down. So what happens along there Mike? Watch where you tread in this game. I see, so this is where the water comes in. This is it. And the pipe is there, it goes under the road and then out and back into the river. Yes. And you can see the entrance to the pipe. There's only a trickle at the moment, there's only a little tiny bit of water being let through. So when you've completed this uh, shooting, uh, you'll divert the water presumably from that pipe to come down here. Well, what I have to do is to make a sluice gate which will lift up or down to close off the pipe. And when it's closed, the water level will rise. It'll rise to about that sort of height. Yes. And it'll r run along and then feed the wheel. Hmm, marvellous. Well, I think that's a really great job of work done. I think we've owed uh, ourselves a glass of beer right now. Great. I'm going to head for the nearest uh, bottle. Now Mr. Godsall, with all this uh, land you have here and these uh, wooded 
sides to the valley, um, I gather you'll shortly be employing me as your chief architect. And um, we've been drawing up a few designs here and uh, wondered what you thought of them. A um, little bit of timber building here, let me see. I don't, you, I don't know what you think about these uh, designs, but we've got a little tree house here. So what are your uh, intentions over the uh, building of a treehouse? I think I shall give you carte blanche. There's ten acres of woodland and goodness knows how many trees, and I shall stand back with uh, amazement and watch the results. Okay, the so... tools are in the shed, the trees are on the hill, uh, you may get on with it tomorrow. That's fantastic. I, what, what an open design brief. So what sort of tools and what sort of trees? Well, we can start off with an axe, mm -hmm. a machete, a chainsaw, mm -hmm. hand saws, and um, your own ingenuity. And what sort of trees have you got up there? Well, there's a mixture. There's ash, uh, very spindly oak, a few alder, and two very splendid uh, adult beech trees. But for the most part, it's very tall, very thin, and you can do it. Thin. This is the gateway to India. The biggest ones you have. Well, it's a long way to come to uh, get stuff for your mill. What are you after? Well, I'm looking for some special oilers for um, the main water wheel bearings. They don't make them in the UK anymore. Really? But there yeah. might be some left over here from Victorian times. Hmm? Be very useful indeed. No, I had taken it for you. Remember, I told you I buy, I keep it when I can, uh, wherever I get it, I'll keep it for you. Uh -huh. But what happened? Oh, no. that, uh, Bearings are just like the sort of things I use at home on, on, on the water mill. Well, we seem to be at quite an exciting stage of the uh, project with Mike here perched precariously on top of these four poles that we've just uh, put into position. We've just ground off the ends of the securing bars. Uh, underneath this platform, um, Mike intends to cast some or lay some flagstones at the base of these poles so that eventually this will be a, a running pool uh, taking some of the overflow from the chutes. On my left here we can see the other wheel which I think is going to be left for the time being uh, as a sort of reminder of the past while what we're involved with here is the restoration of the other wheel to get it working. When do you hope that will be Mike? sooner the better, but uh, sometime this year. Hmm. We're now in the summer, or rather the late summer of 1986. So what's, uh, what's next on the agenda then, Mike? Well, we need to strengthen these poles a bit by putting in some, some reinforcing bolts just to hold everything together. And after that, another section of this iron platform will go to meet the top of the wheel. Um, In fact these platforms are really quite incredible. What did they come from? Well they weren't purpose built. They're part yeah. of a, a jib for a crane Goodness. which I discovered in a scrapyard. If I had to have them made they would have been many hundreds of pounds, but in fact I only paid uh, about 15 pounds for each section. That's quite uh, incredible really when one thinks of the job and the function that they'll fulfill. But it's almost as if they were purpose made for the job. Yes. They, they're just, just right. Absolutely. I'd say uh, that will carry a fair volume of water without any uh, risk of uh, the sides overflowing or bulging or breaking. What a fantastic view it is uh, from up here as I pan around uh, and take a view over the rooftop. And goodness, what's this over in the horizon, Mike? Oh, the teepee. Yes, the Indians left, I'm afraid. <laughs>
that was overspill accommodation when I had a working party last year and I thought it would be rather fun to have something unusual in the way of a tent. Yes. Uh, I've even made a pool with some steps down to it so that people can leap out from the teepee and dive into the babbling brook. Just removing the shuttering from the uh, footings for a support for the mill leak, which goes off overhead to feed water to the wheel. Oh, I see. Now the wheel looks rather intriguing because the last time I was down uh, here, Mike, um, the wheel was virtually in a state of collapse. What have you done to it? Well, if you see uh, the bright metal on the wheel, uh, I've renewed all the buckets there's about 60 of them and um, put new bearings on the wheel so the wheel is all ready to turn but there's nothing to turn it as yet because the water has to go from up in the uh, bank there yes you can see a sluice and then it crosses over a metal bridge over this tower which contains uh, an overflow and then it has to cross along the lines of string to the top yes. of the wheel where it discharges to get the wheel to turn. So what are these pieces of string? Well they show the line that the uh, supports for the mill leak will take and the vertical bits of string show where uh, I'm going to be using telephone poles. Oh I see. Hold everything up. So this uh, this shuttering that you were removing was uh, for the concrete. That looks pretty deep concrete. What's that about a foot deep or something? Yes, well in fact there'll be a bit more there because the water will flow out of this big pipe and cascade down the rocks and yes. they tend to want to undermine the footings here so ah. I have to build it up in this low muddy area and eventually the water will flow through a pond along and out and through under a tunnel here yes. under the wheel and back out to the river. Yes. So I hope in this pond to have a few fish perhaps. Oh, that'd be fantastic. So when I was down here a couple of years ago, I remember you were crawling on your tummy um, at the other end of that um, orifice, yes. uh, dredging, if you like, the uh, mud and sediment that was... Because uh, what's that, about a foot high or something that goes... Uh, it's, a, it's a tunnel a little bigger than that, if it's about three foot square, but yes. I felt as if I was escaping from a prison camp. That. Yes, I remember that. And that comes out about... Uh, comes out beyond the house, about... 50 uh, yards or so, 75 yards. 50, 20, 20 odd yards away. Yeah. On your um, left-hand side is the water wheel, which has not yet been rebuilt. Oh, yes. And I it can... shows how the, uh, the other wheel has uh, had a lot of work done on it. I'll eventually get around to rebuilding this wheel. When was the uh, wheel last in uh, commission, would you say? It's a little difficult to figure it out, but it must have been sometime uh, during the middle of the last war. Yes. When all the workers here literally downed tools and they yes. went away to fight. And they just left yes. everything hardly... Uh, I don't think they even turned the water off, judging by the state of the place. And I, and I gather you've got some garments that uh, were... Uh, woven here. Um. Ah yes, there was a sock making machine. I still have uh, a hand sock making machine in the mill. I, I'll bring it out and show you in a minute. We have a problem of the monkey and the banana here insofar as uh, we're trying to erect the scaffolding to lower some telegraph poles which will become the vertical supports for the trough of the water mill and Mike and I have spent the last two or three hours puzzling out how on earth we're going to do it so I hope we're winning at this stage 
from this point we have to raise the top horizontal beam until it is perfectly horizontal uh, by means of rigging up a ladder and climbing up it and adjusting the clamps at the top so that that beam up there is horizontal. So we'll have to see how we get on. Okay, we've got Jeremy going up the ladder here. He's uh, at least 15 feet off the ground already. and He's looking a bit apprehensive, I think. Well, it's probably not as 20, 15, 20 foot high, isn't as spectacular as one thinks it is, but what we're trying to do here is work out a method of uh, rigging up the vertical telegraph poles with the horizontal grid onto which goes the chute to the waterway. And uh, as I say, we spent about two or three hours literally figuring out how on earth we're going to do it. So we've got these two scaffolding um, braces here, which has basically put the horizontal in position, and now we just run the ladder up. And the next stage is to get some reinforcing scaffolds up, which I can secure with the spanner at the top of this ladder. And then we'll eventually get to the top of the water wheel, and there it is. So that should be okay, Mike. Yeah, and we just press it. And here we have Jeremy at the top of the ladder doing the vital uh, connection to make everything secure. He doesn't seem to show any fear for heights and there's no way I would be up in that sort of position without an aeroplane. What do you mean Mike? You've been up at uh, what, 40,000 feet or something? Yeah, but I had a nice comfortable aeroplane to sit in yeah. and you seem to be suspended on uh, next to nothing. Anyway, I'm glad it's you and not me. This will. Oh, 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 I feel faint. Oh, oh feel God! Faint right, the car. time, time to pan out. <laughs> All right. That's it. Good. Well, as you can see, we've got this uh, telegraph pole into place, and not without trouble, I can tell you, because what we've done is we've got this uh, very heavy pole up from down on the ground by the mill. We leave it up against these two stone walls. Uh, Mike and I have just spent the last half hour doing that. And, um, and then pivoted it down on the base. And then with a piece of rope that I had to lasso over the top, that took me about 10 minutes lassoing it because the pole, of course, was leaning against uh, the wall over there. I managed to grab pole and much to Mike's disgust he uh, let me uh, pull it over and it didn't fall crashing to the ground uh, we managed to screw it into the place and of course now we're just putting the spindle through it so we've actually got a nice steady stir firm uh, vertical support here and yep. you can see that the race this iron lattice work will support the fiberglass tanks for carrying the water all the way down uh, to the mill wheel, which hopefully in time will turn. And we'll finish Mike off is on terribly top of jerky shot. Jeremy. I'm afraid we have an amateur camera <laughs> behind the. Uh... Jesus. 